Like I've had some really horrible trading days. For instance, a couple weeks ago, I lost $89,000 on a trade. Wow. And not only did I lose that money, but I did it live on YouTube. Welcome everyone back to the Words of Wisdom podcast here at the FX Summit. And now we are joined by Chris DiStefano. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me here, man. I'm very excited to be here. It's my pleasure, man. It's my pleasure. And uh, as you saw, we just had Q on. Yeah. You're next. Tell us, we'll go straight into your journey. Like, how did you get to where you are today? Just try and keep it a little bit brief just because of where we're at. But yeah, how did you get to where you are today, man? You know, I think it's just the leadership and, you know, hanging out with the right people. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I am a mentorship student of Q Banks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, between Q and Anthony, just watching their journey, you know, and watching them closely, I think not so much what they do on the charts, mm -hmm. but what they do off of the charts. I mean, they're incredible businessmen and their minds are just crazy. So, you know, I kind of just stuck towards like, what are these guys really doing behind the closed doors? It's not mm -hmm. necessarily on the charts, okay. but off the charts, you know, mm -hmm. how are they moving? What is their schedule like? Things like that. So I just identified these like small, like these little nuances about their life. And I just like said, I'm going to follow their steps, literally step by step. Mm -hmm in life in general, you know? So if you hang around these type of guys, you're bound to be successful. No, definitely. And uh, what was your trading journey like then? So they were like the mentorship and the, and the yeah. education side. Yeah. But you know, what, how are you trading now? Are you trading full time now? Yeah, full time. Yeah. Full time for four years now. Incredible. So it, it's been, my first two years of trading were a lot more difficult because it was, uh, I was trying to go full time in the middle of COVID. Mm. You know, so full time in the middle of COVID. So it, for me, it was either, you know, sink or swim, like you have to do it. There's no option for failure. But in my case, I did have a little bit of money starting out because I had a security company that I owned. So, okay. you know, I had a, a bit of capital that I could play with as a cushion, mm. you know? So it wasn't like, you know, I had to start from the bottom, bottom, like most people do. Yeah. You know, I had a couple hundred thousand dollars that I can play with. Oh, wow. So it's like, let me play with this and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But being that I have this money, I can't just rush it. I still yeah. have to understand what risk management is and mm -hmm. things like that. So I was very quick to pay for the right education the mm -hmm. first time. Did you have any sort of moments? Because like you said, it's quite unique to be have the capital there. Yeah. But did you have any issues where you had capital so it was a bit too easy to maybe like risk something? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that was one of my main things is that yeah. since I had a couple hundred thousand to play with, yeah. I was like, okay, I didn't really understand lot sizes or anything like that. So yeah. I'm just like, okay, you know, GJ, I'm going to throw a hundred lot. Ooh. And it's like, oh my God, like I made $40,000. So mm -hmm. I was making money but I didn't understand that I can also lose that same amount of money yeah. like that. So my losses were equal to my wins. Okay. I was basically coming out of the gate as a break-even trader. Okay, yeah, yeah, so lucky though, because it could have been the opposite, it right? Been it could have been really bad. Yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, what were the key things that helped you to then overcome that in terms of getting from there, that position to more consistent and seeing that profitability? You know, honestly, I'm a single father. I take care of my daughter full time. Mm. So just taking care of my daughter and understanding that every move that I make is gonna impact her life one way or another. Mm -hmm. I gotta be really focused on like, hey, this trading thing, I gotta really take my time because if I'm losing this capital, honestly, my security company's failing because we're in COVID right now. It's mm -hmm. not doing anything. So this is like it. So even though I have like money, I gotta like use the money properly and make sure that I'm protecting that just the same way I protect my daughter. Yeah. You know, I so it that. was just like, I had to move with a little bit of finesse, mm -hmm. understanding that this is her money. Mm -hmm. It's not my money, it's my daughter's money. Yeah. If I lose this, it's hers. Like, what yeah. am I going to do then? You know? No, 100. percent And what's it like then, uh, being you know full-time father? It's honestly one of the most rewarding things because it's just like no matter what I do, I get that unconditional love, and she's always there for me, even mm. on my worst days. Mm. Like I've had some really horrible trading days. For instance, a couple of weeks ago, I lost eighty-nine thousand dollars on a trade, wow. and not only did I lose that money, but I did it live on YouTube. Oh, wow. So it's like I had an audience, and to be able to just shut down my computer and then turn around and look at her and she could just feel my energy. Mm. She came over and she's like, hey daddy, I love you. And that just fixed my whole day. Mm. And I just was, a, I could go forward with the rest of my day as if I never lost the money in the first place. Mm. And that was when I knew like, wow, I was put in this position as a single father for a reason. Mm. Because if it wasn't for that, you know, some people may not have had the same type of day. No, definitely. And you know what, people without kids probably won't understand that. Um, obviously I have my daughter as well. And it's something different because, you know, as, especially in the world that we live in, especially in the world when you're an adult, in adult life, yeah. you, it's so easy to get attached to money and jobs and, and all these other things. But then children really show you and reflect back that all that really matters is that, as you say, love, time, you know, energy, that, that's all that really matters. Yeah. So like people out there who don't have kids might not resonate, but I understand what you're getting at because yeah. it's like, 
you know, I've had, I've, I've had losses where my daughter will come in the room and I'll be all frustrated or mad. But then when you look at them, you realize, no, like I can't be, like, well, I can't be right now anyway. And then yeah. you quickly realize actually it doesn't matter. I have to learn. But like taking a loss like that then, for example, it's, it's a very you know, large amount. You know, what, is, that a, is that still just a percentile of the account, for example, in terms of risk management? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I'm trading on a pretty large account. At the time, it was an $800,000 account. Okay. It was a little bit risky of a trade. I think at that point, I had 880 in the account. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it wasn't supposed to be that type of loss. Mm -hmm. I was just, it lost in the sauce emotionally and mentally. Mm -hmm. So that was more of a loss than I needed to take in that instance anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just one of those things that happens. You okay. know? I, then, I accepted it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, you, you mentioned just before we started that you came to the summit last year. Yeah. You know, and, and what was it like, obviously, last year and compared to this year? You know what? So last year, Q started a Telegram group called Q's Tips and Charts. Mm -hmm. And he added me to that group. We had about 7,000 people in that Telegram mm -hmm. group. And we're just doing free breakdowns. So that was right around the time we came to the summit. Mm -hmm. I had 4,000 followers on Instagram. And I'm like, I'm just this nobody, you know, I'm new. Nobody knows who I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking in here and I just go to the bathroom. I come out, there's a whole group of people like, yo, what's up, Chris? Yeah. And I was anxiety through the roof because <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, what am I like? These people know me. I was just so embarrassed because mm -hmm. I was like, I do some silly shit on my, on my Instagram. Really? And I was like, these people actually watch me do that stuff. It's <laughs> different because I'm in the comfort of my own home. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, like doing whatever I'm doing. But then I'm like, wow, they, I forgot that they're watching me do this. Yeah. So then now this year, I'm like, wow, I have 25,000 followers now. Not the, like a lot, but it's significantly more than last year. And now it's like people actually came here and flew from Austria and all these different countries just to like shake my hand and hang out. Yeah. So it's a little bit, you know, it, it's mind blowing, you know, the, the level of impact that you know, we can leave as traders to really show people what's going on and you can change things. Definitely. So I didn't know that we had that much reach as traders at mm. all. I never knew that. So this is new to me. Definitely, man. <laughs> and, you know, what would be your message to people out there? You know, because there's a lot of people here, no doubt, who are still going on their journey. Yeah. You know, they're still trying to find that consistency. Um, now, what would your message to them be in terms of like, what tips could you give them? Let's, let's say top three tips to progress. You know what, here's the biggest tip, and, and I wish I would have known this at the beginning of my journey, right? It would have saved me a lot, is understanding that what you do off the charts in your regular daily life is gonna translate to what you do on the charts. Mm. You know, your discipline, your temperament, if someone cuts you off, how are you dealing with that? You know, are you getting like, you know, getting pissed off, beating mm. the horn, trying to chase them down, road rage? Like those things matter. A person that has road rage is the same type of person that's going to revenge trade mm -hmm. because they got to get back at it. You know, and I notice these things like psychology is the biggest thing. Yeah. And I notice more often than not, people are chasing the technical analysis mm -hmm. and like, that's great. Learn that. But pay more attention to the psychology aspect in it and who you are as a person and your temperament. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. No, I love that. I love that. And, uh, you know, well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for jumping on. Appreciate uh, it. No doubt we will speak again in the future. No doubt. Enjoy the summit. But the links for Chris will be in the description below. So make sure you check those out as well. And as always, check you out in the next one. <laughs>